hi friends welcome back to the channel today we'll be solving a problem re related to universal testing machine it's a relatively simple problem but it can drive home a few concepts related to tensile testing of specimens so without much ado let's get started uh, here uh, we have a few specimens this is not given in problem I gave it for the completeness of explanation and this is a typical UTM sketch here we have some very important things to notice one is the upper crosshead and then the next is the movable crosshead so the specimen will be mounted in this region and the movable crosshead will move depending upon the type of test you perform if it's a compression test it has to go up and if it's a tension test it has to come down uh, sounds simple right but in this problem we have a universal testing machine we have a sample whose length is 100 mm and it is it was loaded in tension until failure the failure load is given as 40 kN the displacement measured using crosshead motion uh, slightly I will take a detour from the problem there are a lot of ways in which you can measure the displacement during a tension test uh, you can use your the crosshead motion as in this example you can use strain gauge or you can use uh, what you call the extensometer in industry we have extensometer even uh, which will work fine in at high temperatures as well but just to consolidate on that aspect there are three ways which you can measure the displacement cross head strain gauge and extensometer in this problem we are using the most easiest one that is the cross head motion and they are telling the displacement measured using the cross head motion at failure was 15 mm the complaints of the utm is constant and is given as a value is given i'm not going to read that out read that out loud the strain at failure in the sample is it appears as a pretty straightforward question but a couple of things to note here is that when you do a tension test as the specimen gets deformed there will be a small amount of deformation within the utm itself because it is having some compliance as given in this problem so when you use your crosshead motion as a measurement of displacement you measure both these displacements i mean you measure the displacement that comes out of the specimen as well as the displacement that comes out of the deformation or that is caused by the deformation of the utm itself make sense so the measurement what you just measured the 15 mm is not uh, from the specimen and lawn it there could be a contribution from the deformation of the utm also make sense if that is clear then we can go ahead and solve the problem so here i have just put together all the values that were given in the problem we, we know the sample length we know the failure load then we know the amount of displacement measured by the crosshair uh, we also know the complaints of the system it is given as a uh, fight times 10 to the power minus 8 meter per newton be careful with the units uh, this complaints can be utilized to evaluate the deformation within the universal testing machine how we can evaluate it we can multiply the complaints with the amount of load applied as shown over here so that amounts to something like 20 to the power of 10 to the power minus 4 meter or in other words that amounts to something like 2 mm so this is the amount of deformation that will happen within the utm it's not in the specimen it's in the utm so you should not be using this to compute the strain in the specimen makes sense that that's a catch of this problem everything else is <clears throat> far more simple so i have just put down whatever i have explained in the last four to five minutes the total displacement measured by the crosshead motion is specimen displacement plus displacement due to utm complaints to give it or to transform the same 
statement into an expression into a mathematical mathematical expression like this i can write 15 mm as a summation of x specimen plus 2 mm where x specimen is the deformation felt by the specimen so the deformation felt by the specimen amounts to something like 13 mm so here i'm not computing true strain i'm computing engineering strain only engineering strain is defined as elongation divided by original length so strain in percentage can be evaluated as given here elongation divided by original length multiplied by 100 all these are simple expressions now once we know the elongation so elongation is 13 mm the original length of the specimen is 100 mm so the strain in percentage amounts to 13 percentage so this is the answer so let me summarize the key concept is there are three ways in which you can measure the displacement during a tensile tension testing one is the strain gauge second is the crosshead motion and third is an extensor meter in this example they used crosshead motion that is the most easiest method to measure the displacement used during a tension test but you have to be very careful about the compliance of the machine or the universal testing machine if you have seen the specifications of these machines users will definitely they will, there will be a specification where they talk about the complaints of the matrix and the users or the customers will usually specify we need a UTM of this complaints why they are we putting more emphasis on complaints this is the reason makes sense so it's an easy question but it is a useful question to drive home a few concepts thank you thanks for watching